I've always thought in, in the last maybe th uh, 30, 40 years, there's been a lot of work done in contemporary art with word. Words appearing either using neon or appearing on canvases and the idea of the words become a large focus of a lot of contemporary art, which I've never really shared. I don't somehow feel that often the word actually uh, works in contemporary sculpture. It's often much too didactic, uh, leads to a lot of uh, very, uh, I would say, straightforward political art. And I, I think uh, as a general idea about art, it's very important that each person looking at a piece of art can make their own journey. Um, however, sound, being of its very nature far more abstract, I've always thought has a far more interesting potential to be uh, important and relevant to contemporary art. And in the last few years, there's been a predominance of sound as an element in contemporary art. So when I first saw the works of Spazio Visivo, which is going back maybe uh, six or seven, five, six years, in an art fair in Bologna, in Italy, um, I was immediately struck by the originality of the idea and by how the sound really reinforced what the visuals were doing. All the work of Spazio Visivo is, is done by two artists. Stefano Trevisi, who is a contemporary composer and does work with uh, conventional instruments and also with orchestra, but in the case of these works they do together, um, he uses soundscapes, sound, um, from a variety of sources. And Paolo Cabinato, who is a contemporary sculptor. And in the work they do together, which is what the exhibition focuses on, because Paolo Cabinata exists as a sculptor in his own right, but that the work they do together is goes under the banner Spazio Visivo, which is visual space. Because in all the installations there is this element of light, which both determines an idea of time, because the light comes on, comes off, and perceptions of space because there are moments when you see spaces illuminated then they go into darkness and other space becomes visible so this concept of space as something that is real and space as something that is imaginary uh, is fundamental to the show and obviously when it's imaginary it's beyond what we understand as sight. Paolo he used to work uh, in another life as a set designer and so set design is all about imaginary space and real space. And of course because the sound, we're never clear where the sound is coming from. Um, there's no, uh, in most cases there's no obvious loudspeaker and the sound is hidden. The sound also in some way becomes part of this idea of space, imaginary and real.
one of the elements of Paolo or Spazio Visiva's work since the beginning has been the memory. In the materials they used, you'll see in lots of the works old wallpaper, uh, which obviously refers to previous lives, previous existences, previous places where one lives, uh, and all the materials have this sense of age. And so nothing is bright and shiny. Um, everything is supposed to be to have somewhere been tainted by the vestiges of time. Although there are references, and one of the things is Machot, the 15th century French composer, um, they're not apparent because everything is somehow hidden away by uh, the composer's work. It's all, this, all the sounds are either recorded live or electronic, or electronically processed. There's no conventional instruments, and so you know, Stefano would never actually take a quotation directly from a previous source. It's all there as an inspiration. Maybe if I had to choose one particular work that I feel both encapsulates the exhibition and, because it's made this year, seems to be a very strong indicator of the direction in which, one of the directions in which I think they will go, it would be Hans, which relates very specifically to Paolo's uh, yearning for Italy when he was doing uh, a six-month um, uh, residency uh, in Shanghai, having won the Swatch Prize. And so there are references in his mind that are very Italian. And um, sound comes from five different sources. There are references to Giotto's paintings in these little uh, boxes of hidden rooms, hidden staircases. Obviously, in the case of Giotto, there were people inhabiting them. This is just the architectural uh, buildings. But obviously, architecture is one of the things that they're very interested in, and which is a continual element of the exhibition. Um, and so for Paolo, all these various boxes, old wallpaper, uh, shapes, refer in some way to memories of his own life. But the, actually for each of us, they can represent a lyrical and even psychological journey because um, we've all got rooms that are hidden away, uh, mm, stairs that lead to either nowhere or to another space. Um, the idea of old wallpapers that represent previous places we've inhabited exist for all of us. So the work is so open-ended and the two hands, consumed hands, which lie at the very centre and at the very base of the large installation, are there as if they're gathering all, uh, like water from a waterfall, all these uh, various sources which uh, compound each of our own lives and the memory of our own lives.